last few episodes have discussed CSS techniques that will make our PeopleSoft instance look like 858. In this episode, we will continue transforming an 857 instance. Specifically, let's change the blue header to match 858. Now, I don't have the 858 header color code in front of me, but I do know it's more like black than blue. So let's just use black. Let's start with Fluid. We brand Fluid differently from Classic, so let's start first with inspecting our PeopleSoft interface. Looking at the HTML, I see a complex series of nested HTML elements. Which one contains the background color? I don't know. That's a great question. So let's hover over the elements to find first the outer header element. We will know the outer header element because it will be the last element that highlights just the header region. The very next element will highlight too much of the browser's window. So working our way up, we see header. OK, let's keep going. Header. Let's keep going. Header. Too far up. I see this has an ID of PT wrapper. Let's keep that in mind for later. Now, using the styles panel on the right, I'm going to switch to the computed tab. Unlike the Styles tab, which shows everything, the Computed tab just shows me what is applied and where that comes from. So what we're looking for is a background attribute that sets the background color. It might be an image. So I'll just use my keyboard to move down through the HTML structure until we see an HTML element with a background. No background. No. 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 Oh, there it is, background image. I see that it's the banner. Oh, that makes sense. And I see that the CSS comes from PSStyleDef F mode. That's great, because in a prior episode, we learned how to properly customize PSStyleDef F mode. So now let's apply some styling. We'll start by defining a style rule to reset the background image. So I like the style class banner, uh, sorry, dot ps header bar. And let's clear out the background image. So this would be considered a reset. Oh, do you see that blue bar at the bottom of the header? Huh, <laughs> I wonder where that's coming from. Let's look back at computed, and we see border bottom. Oh, interesting. It's coming from an entirely different style sheet. Well, we can still apply our styling in PSStyleDef F mode. We know that's included everywhere. But we will need to rely on selector specificity, meaning we will have to create a CSS selector that is more qualified than the Oracle delivered CSS selector. This is because we can no longer depend on our rule loading last. Now our selector has to be more specific than the Oracle delivered selector. And the ID selector would be the most specific selector, but looking at the banner ID, I see that it actually uses a variable in its name. So we don't want to use that. But looking up through the HTML, I do see we have an ID of PT wrapper as a parent. So we can therefore qualify our selector with the PT wrapper parent. And we can see that it matches because the color stays darker bold. Let's now get rid of the border. Let's go zero, zero, zero. Uh, zero, zero, zero would be the hexadecimal for black. And let's set the background as well. Perfect. So we're close. Now the nav bar icon 
has the wrong color, but then again, it's actually the wrong co icon for 858 anyway. Also, the hover effect for each of the other buttons is showing the wrong color, but hey, I'm happy with what we have so far. So, uh, you know, we've made it so far with so few lines. Let's just persist what we have in a freeform style sheet and application designer. Look at that, three lines. And we'll save it. How about our site specific prefix? Theme 858. Now, this is for fluid. What I mentioned earlier is that we actually style classic different from fluid. And we'll use FF because this is a freeform style sheet. Now, let's attach it to PS style def F mode. Perfect. And we see that in the order tab, it actually does show a blast. But then again, we saw that the content, some of the content we're overwriting is actually in a different style sheet. So load order is less important here. And selector specificity is what rules here. So let's refresh and make sure that our content stuck. And there it is. Perfect. Okay. To apply to classic, we must first write some classic specific CSS. So let's navigate to a classic component. I'm going to choose People Tools, Portal, Branding, Branding System Options. Out of the box, the classic header looks like the fluid header, but they use entirely different HTML and therefore require different CSS. Let's inspect the header here. And looking at the styles tab, specifically at the computed tab, it appears that the classic header is, is styled through default theme fluid, which happens to be a style sheet specified through the attribute or role-based branding module. And that makes sense. Now, if your organization uses multiple branding themes, then you definitely want to follow the branding module to apply a color change. But most customers only have one branding theme. And if that is you, then we can globally transform the classic header with very little effort and do it all as a configuration. No customization. You see, the component we are viewing right now allows us to apply CSS globally. We just need to create the style sheet and attach it here. If we take this approach, our CSS selector does need to be more specific than Oracle's. But hey, Let's save that for another episode. So the CSS tricks we've demonstrated in the last few episodes have prompted us to create a new pre-recorded on-demand People Tools branding training course. Now it isn't ready yet, but when it is, we'll be sure to let you know. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our announcements. And you can also follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook to stay up to date with all of our course offerings. I included our social links in the video description. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.